Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Welcome to Pre-Surface Prayer. Let's quiet our hearts and pray. Father God, we just thank you so much for this Sunday, for this Sabbath that we have, that we can rest in you and rest together as a family. Right now, um, Holy Spirit, we just invite you into this room, into every single room where uh, the service is being broadcasted, into every single heart uh, that is near, um, to all of our children who are also tuning in to our children's service. Lord, we just invite you to come and reign and take the throne of our hearts again. Lord, if there's anything um, that we have to confess, I pray that you would bring that to our attention so that we can confess and come to you with a clean heart. Lord, if there's anybody that we have to forgive, I pray that you would also call that out right now so that we can forgive as you have forgiven us first. And Lord, we just ask that you help us to pray, Lord God, um, and really hold fast to your word and to the power and authority that comes because of what Jesus did on the cross. We thank you, Jesus. Be with us today. And we pray. Amen. The scripture I want to share this morning is from Romans 12, um, and it's about unity of the body. And that's going to be a theme and um, a download that we'll pray throughout this pre-service session today. So Romans 12, verse 3. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God had assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we through many are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be genuine, abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with brotherly affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal, be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer, and contribute to the needs of the saints, and seek to show hospitality. Let's begin by praying for unity among households and families. Let's pray for harmony across multiple generations for those of us who are living um, with our families. Um, but also for those of us who have families that we're trying to maintain good relationships that are not inside the same household. Let's pray for um, the elderly, the children, um, for those of us with roommates, um, for those of us with helpers. They're all part of our family. And so let's just pray for a united heart um, and unity during this time. Let's take some time to pray. Father God, we are grateful. We thank you for the people um, that we can call family on this earth. We thank you for the people that we live with in the household. We thank you for our family that uh, we were born into. And Lord, we just confess that too often, um, too often we let the people we love the most get on our nerves. Um, and Lord, there are many times where we may feel stuck where we may feel resentful and bitter for um, being in such close quarters with people that we love. Um, but Lord, we just come to you now and just remember that, you know, nothing's by accident um, and that you have a good and perfect will for all of us. And so we just thank you, Lord God, um, for this time that we can spend with our family. We thank you for technology that also allows us to spend time um, with family that you know is across different time zone and i just pray lord god for a deeper sense um, of harmony um, lord father that you would turn the hearts of the fathers to their sons and children and you would turn the hearts of the sons to the fathers lord god and that if there's any tension within households lord god any hostility any animosity or bitterness that we would lay that at the foot of the cross um, lord i pray that you would uncover the veil over our eyes um, when we see 
people um, within the same household or God, or when we see people that um, are starting to irritate us, and we would put on new eyes to recognize that this is our family, this is our flesh. And so God, I just pray for more forgiveness to abound, um, for you to come and bring um, forgiveness and to bring uh, more unity within marriages, Lord God, um, that you would give us a bigger dose of your love so that we have the ability to sacrifice um, and bring the best out of each other during this difficult time. So yeah, Lord, we just pray um, for your peace and your love to reign in these households, um, in our family, and for us to you know, go the extra mile, Lord Father, um, to love one another during this critical time. Let's also pray for um, our church, our spiritual family. Um, let's pray for greater unity and edification within house churches, um, within different ministries, within um, mission partners, outreach partners in the community, um, and also um, SPIN. Let's take some time to pray. Father God, your word says that, you know, the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and, it, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Um, Father God, I just pray that these words in Hebrew would really, string, would really ring true to us today, um, that the scripture that we read about us being part of the same body, Lord God, um, the many members um, in one body in Christ, Lord God, that this would also cut deep to our heart. Lord, I pray that you would reveal the areas um, where we can love on each other more. Um, God, we confess that it's been a difficult season um, and that we don't know really how to love each other remotely all the time. And many of us may experience Zoom fatigue and um, difficulties with different communication methods. But Lord, we believe that with you, Jesus, anything's possible. So we just exalt the name of Jesus above all of these difficulties, all of these adjustments that we have to make. And we just pray that, I just pray that love would reign, Lord God, that we will remember, first of all, how much you love us and how much you call us to love one another. Father God, you, you your word says that this is how the world would know that you are real. It's how we love one another, Lord God. The, and, and Father, I just pray that this becomes reality more now than ever, um, that you would call attention and intention back to our house churches, Lord God, that you would bring across um, a unified heart to different ministries, Lord God, um, that haven't been able to see each other in action for a while. Lord, that you would give us an extra heart to see our neighbors, Lord God, those who are in need, um, the people that we have to outreach, Lord God, to. Um, help us to contend for one another with greater fervence, Lord God, and let it help us to really contend for our spin sisters, especially during this time, Lord God, when we know it's increasingly difficult with the workload that they have and the restrictions that may have come upon them, Lord. And so, Lord, I just pray that we would all remember that this battle is not in flesh and blood, but it's in within the spirit. And so I pray that you would equip us all to pray powerfully and to contend relentlessly for one another, for this spiritual um, body that we have in Christ, Lord God, knowing that this is the church. It's our relationships with one another. It's not a house. It's not a physical building. It's not programs. It's not agendas, Lord God. It's our relationships with one another. And so I pray that you would really bind our hearts um, back together in, in, in love, Lord God. And if there's any offense um, uh, because of labels or different things or different factions, Lord God, that you would just dissolve all of that in the name of Jesus right now. Lord, we want to pray for our leaders as well. Um, we want to pray for um, P. Matt and P. Sam, that you would give them extra discernment, um, wisdom, love, and protection, Lord God, that they would have such intimate times with you, Lord God, so that as they um, draw close to you, Lord God, they can pull the rest of our body together in alignment with your perfect will during this time. 
So we thank you for um, this church that we have. Um, we thank you for the spiritual family um, that we can call home no matter where we are in life or where we are physically. Um, and we just bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lastly, let's take some time to pray for our international community. Let's pray both for the Solomon's Porch churches across uh, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Beijing, Japan, um, and New York. Uh, let's pray for greater unity across uh, SPs at large, and the greater churches at large, um, and certainly for our political leaders and global climate um, during this time. Let's take some time to pray. Father God, we just thank you for our community. God, we thank you that you created us to be in community. And Lord, um, thank you for the image, Father, that you know, um, when we are in our closets and when we open our eyes, we may see just ourselves, but when we close our eyes and come to you in prayer, Lord God, um, you bring a picture of just armies around the world of people joining hands. Um, and so, God, I just thank you for the greater church um, across different countries, across different nations and nationalities and circumstances that we can come together as one bride and really contend for your kingdom come, your will be done here, Lord God. We pray for um, our sister churches that you would provide greater protection, especially during this time of hostility in Hong Kong that we thank you for uh, that there's unity amongst all the churches in Hong Kong, well, a lot of the churches in Hong Kong um, and, and um, many other uh, parts of the world. And we just pray that um, the fast would bring greater great through, Lord God, um, that in our humility, Lord God, and in our submission to you, that you would just be magnified, God, that we would exalt your name above high, that we would be able to see miracles, Lord God, that come, um, when there's less of us and just more of you. Um, Lord, we also contend for our pol political leaders, uh, whether they know you or not, Lord God, I just pray that you would encounter them. You would bring um, dreams, Lord God. You would bring words. You would bring your saints to speak wisdom into them, Lord God, and affect their policy so that there'd be greater harmony, Lord God, um, and that that be um, a way to find consensus and common ground during these difficult times. We pray for the international community of scientists and healthcare providers to also come together and effectively come up with a cure and a way to manage um, this global health crisis and pandemic. Um, we pray for just aid agencies and economies, Lord God, um, to come in alignment, Lord Father. We pray that during this time, um, of suffering that you would help us to overcome lord god that what the enemy had meant for evil that you we that you can turn into good in your own way and so father we just lay down um all of our own um complaints our frustrations um and we ask that you transfer all that negative energy into worship during this time that we can come together um as one body to contend in the spirit lord god um, for everything that you've called us to do. Um, we thank you that we can partner with you in prayer and contend for these things and that you call us friends. And we pray. Amen. And so God, lastly, we just invite you to um, really cover all aspects of this service, um, prepare our hearts um, to be fruitful soil for the word that's going to be preached today. Prepare our minds and our ears and our bodies and our spirits and souls to worship you with everything that we have, Lord God. I pray for an extra ounce of joy um, to reign um, in our adult worship session and also the children, Lord God. Um, we thank you for the many activities that have been planned throughout the week as well. And so I just pray for continual transformation um, and edification and unity with the body to happen, even post-sermon. Um, we bless all those um, that have worked behind the scenes to put um, the service together and help this uh, help many of our um, functions run. Um, and I just pray that you would establish their hands, Lord God, and that you would bring out double portion anointing during this time. And last of all, we just pray that you would welcome all the newcomers, people who are dialing in for the first time, that they would find a sense of home here. 
um, at Solomon's Porch, Singapore, and that you would help us to extend our hands um, to bring them into a more welcoming community where God and family during this time. We love you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. Welcome, SP, to our Sunday service online. We're so glad you could join us today. As we enter into a time of worship, I just wanted to share a reflection uh, that I realized after singing the song we're about to sing, The Goodness of God. And the bridge goes, your goodness is running after me. And this line actually comes from Psalm 23. And the verse goes, surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I've always loved this psalm, and one of the most famous lines in this psalm is, of course, um, even though I walk through the darkest valley or the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And a friend recently shared with me that it's uh, not an accident that God says he will lead us through the valley and never to the valley of the shadow of death. And I just realized that um, as a lot of us are maybe struggling with this time of uh, isolation or um, not being able to do what we want to do, um, God will lead us through it. And we are going through the valley of the shadow of death to a place of greater freedom um, and greater intimacy with God. And so I just wanted to use that to encourage you all today. And uh, let's worship. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God Goodness of 
victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh, I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory Father, you're God that fight for us, and you're the God that never lost a battle. God, I just pray of our church this morning. I know many of us are going through trials and tribulations. God, I just pray that you give us a faith to trust in you. That you're the God that will take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it for good. Thank you. Pray all this in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. Good morning and welcome to Solomon's Porch, Singapore's online service today. Uh, my name is John Kim. I'm one of the lay preachers here and I'm very excited to be here sharing with you guys today. Uh, Pastor Sam Kim asked me to come and share about uh, what it takes to have a God-centered household. And as I was praying into this and just trying to download uh, the word that God had for us today, I kept coming back to this verse, 1 Corinthians 14.33. And it says very simply, it says this, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. Now, this verse is actually the theme verse for the year for our sister church, Solomon's Porch, Hong Kong. Pastor Sam's song had downloaded from the end of last year that God felt that he needed to impress upon our church and really the world around us that he is not a God of chaos, he is not the author of confusion, but that he is the author of peace and a God of order. That is actually their theme for 2020, God of order. And who knew just a few months later that we'd face the biggest global pandemic the world has ever seen, and that more than ever, the world would need to know that God is in control, that God is a God of order. Here in Solomon Sport, Singapore, Pastor Sam Kim, he had the theme for us this year of Grounded. And the specific picture that he had for us was that of an airplane which was designed to soar, but for a season was destined to be grounded in the tarmac, on the hangar, just doing routine maintenance, getting all of its insides right, figuring out the family relationship so it would be ready to soar in the years to come. And who knew that just a few months later, again, literally every single airplane in the entire world would literally be grounded. It's crazy. God is so good to give us these incredibly anointed, prophetic men of God who are just so close to the heart of the Father. Amen? And I feel like the heart of the Father today is just to remind us that He is a God of peace. He is a God of order. I have to admit, if I think back on this whole circuit breaker time and, and lockdown over the last couple of months, there are definitely moments where I have not felt very peaceful, where it didn't feel like my, my household was that centered around God and, and, and His presence was all over us. But in preparing the sermon, I felt like God just totally shifted my perspective on this whole couple months and just really reminded me that, no, I am not the author of confusion. Everything that you felt, it might have apparently been confusing or it might have apparently felt chaotic, but that's not what this has been about. In fact, I've been laying the seeds and the foundation for you and your household for my peace and my presence. So three points today for us about how to have God's peace in our households. The first one is this, peace takes time. Peace takes time. It's super interesting. If you look up the definition of a household in Wikipedia, it's actually not a family, nor is it a group of people who live under one roof. 
The definition of a household is a group of people that live under one roof that share meals together and have a common living area. See, peace takes a solid foundation of relationships with the people around you. And of course, that comes only from shared experience, from spending time together. Have you ever heard of that saying, the family that eats together stays together? Well, I'll tell you, before COVID hit, it was so rare for my family to be able to have a meal together. The boys wake up at 6.30. You know, I try and join them for breakfast some days. Lunch, of course, we're all off doing our different things. At night, I might have a work thing, or my wife Elaine might have a work thing, or some sort of social function. And then even if we're both there, the boys often, they would have Chinese tutoring, so they'd be off eating with the tutor sometimes on the side. It was so rare for us ever to have a meal together. And after COVID hit, and as we've been in the circuit breaker, at times it's felt incredibly confusing and chaotic. What time is dinner again? What are we eating for lunch? But I'll tell you the process and the experience of sharing meals with the family for sure definitely lays the foundation for more peace in our household. The family that eats together stays together. You ever heard of this one? The family that prays together stays together. It's the same thing for us. You know, trying to get three boys to sit still for a devotional is not easy. It feels chaotic. It feels like there's just mass confusion. But this whole time has actually created the space for us to have a devotional much more regularly uh, throughout this period. So it's been amazing. The family that prays together stays together. Here's the third one that I have. This one is a, it's a JK original. The family that plays together stays together. I did this video. I have this uh, vlog called The John Kim Show. And I, I made this video about video games and how they're good for you. And, and in the process of doing that, I was interviewing one of our church members, uh, Charles Go, and, and he was sharing with me off camera that they'd been playing games uh, every night, and he was using it as an opportunity to teach his kids about probability, expected value, and all these concepts. And I thought that's so cool. So we actually started playing games uh, in, in our household pretty much every night. Uh, Mahjong and Catan are the two favorite games uh, of our household. And I'll tell you, there's actually one particular game of Catan. My wife is an incredibly good Catan player. Actually, she's good at all games. She's just like an insane master of all board games. And she's incredibly competitive. But for some reason, on this one particular game, I just, I just could not let her win. I, I, I was so upset. She was getting the boys to, to gang up on me and not trade with me and all these things. And, and so I started raising my voice. I started raising my voice. And I, got, I started yelling. Like I never, the, the kids had never seen this side of me before. I'll tell you, I mean, not that I would condone this behavior in any way, shape, or form, but it felt confusing. It felt chaotic. Certainly, they were confused. Like, who the heck is this man getting so upset over a stupid little board game? But now we look back on that time and we shared that experience. Ha ha, wasn't that funny when Appa made a complete fool of himself? Uh, and we have that, that, that time spent together. The family that plays together stays together. I'm telling you, it's so obvious that now, even despite all of that confusion and chaos, what it seemed like was that actually he had been sowing peace into our household. Second point is this. Peace takes effort. Peace takes effort. In 1 Timothy 4, it says, physical training is of some value, but godliness is of value in all things, holding promise in the present life and the life to come. You see, spiritual training, it's like physical training, except it's better, right? Because it holds benefits not just now, but for eternity, but it's still training. In other parts of scripture, it characterizes the Christian life as, as running a race, but you don't just go run a race, right? You have to train for the race. You see, peace takes effort. A lot of us think uh, that peace comes from circumstances. When I think about peace, I think about just chilling on the beach, right? And uh, having sunglasses on, maybe sipping on a cocktail. The, the waves are just brushing. I mean, it sounds amazing. But actually, that kind of peace that comes from circumstances, it's temporary. It's, it's fake. It doesn't last. But peace that comes and it's, it's real, and it lasts, it actually comes through the condition of your heart. Now think about this for a second, okay? What happens to your heart, your physical heart, when you experience peace? Does your heart rate go down, or does it go up? It goes down, right? We're relaxed, da 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 da, da peace, just chilling, right? When you get stressed, or when you get anxious, 
What happens to your heart? It speeds up. Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. I'm stressed. What's going on? You know, I can't see. There's chaos. There's confusion. Well, think about this. The most effective way to get your resting heart rate down is actually to exercise. And in the same way, the fastest way to get your heart into a condition of real lasting peace is to experience spiritual exercise. There was a period in my life when I was traveling quite a bit for work, and I realized that when I was on the road, uh, I was starting to associate the condition of traveling with being far from God, because it was hard to have quiet time when I'm on the road. You know, the, the, the schedule is so packed, I'm away from my family, and, and so I want to make sure that I'm having a lot of meetings and being productive. Uh, you know, I don't have my guitar, I'm used to worshiping with that. Uh, w during my quiet time when I'm away, I don't have that. Uh, you know, sometimes I'm on very, very long flights, sometimes 20 hours, so how do you have your quiet time in, in a plane? And what I realized is, no, you can actually fix all these things, right? It just takes a little bit of, of effort. So I started to schedule in blocks of time uh, in my day, in the calendar. Uh, instead of bringing my guitar, I started to just worship by dancing, right? In the hotel rooms and, and, and whatnot. Uh, and I realized also that on planes, you can actually, there's a hum. Zzz, you know, when you're, when you're, because of the engine and because you're going so high, there's a hum. And so you can actually talk and sing pretty loudly before people start to complain. So I'd flip on my eye mask and I'd just start worshiping and praying and, and uh, it was amazing, right? I realized that you can actually have great quiet time with God. I brought this habit back home so when I go on vacation now with my wife and kids, sometimes I'll flip on the eye mask and I'll just start worshiping and, and, and praying and every now and then I'll, I'll, I'll feel my wife Elaine come over, rip off the eye mask and say, shh, can you be quiet please? You're embarrassing us. But God is so good, uh, he just started speaking to me in these moments when I was traveling for work in ways that I never even thought I could experience him before. And, and looking back on that time, what I realized is that it's not that these circumstances were bringing me chaos or confusion or anxiety or far, you know, lack of intimacy with God, but what it was was God allowing for more plates to be put on the bar so that my spiritual bench press could get stronger. Fast forward a bit and I'll tell you, quarterbacking home-based learning, uh, you know, so dealing with business, multiple businesses in the family where, where you know, it's a very stressful economic environment and, and all the interrelational you know, issues that could bubble up from there, uh, being locked into a, a, a household for a period of a couple months. I'll tell you, it made travel look like a walk in the park. And moments there, I was sitting there and I was having the same thoughts like, wow, it does not feel peaceful. I do not feel close to God. Uh, every time I sit and I try and have quiet time, my kids come in and bother me, ask me something about one of their assignments, like, what is going on? God, what, what needs to happen? I started to associate this whole time of the circuit breaker and lockdown with, with chaos and confusion and being far from God. And as I prayed about it, God just reminded me, he's like, hey, remember what, what I did in the travel period? Think about that, right? And so I said, okay, yeah, you're right. Uh, you're definitely more powerful than COVID. You're definitely more powerful than, you know, lockdown. So let me just do my part here. So I actually went straight into the lion's den. Uh, I went into the room where the kids are having home-based learning in the morning. And first thing in the morning, I just put on my earphones and I just start praying there. And I start studying the Bible and I start worshiping. And of course, like every two seconds, they'd come over and they'd ask me a question and say, my computer's broken or this assignment isn't there or that or whatever. But instead of being anxious about it and saying, like, oh, well, you're interrupting my time with God, I just, I took out the earplugs, I answered their question, I give them a smile, uh, and then I just go back and, and let God speak to me. And it was crazy. He actually did start speaking to me in ways I never, ever heard him speak to me before. Now, I wouldn't recommend this normally, right? It's, it's called quiet time for a reason. It's not called interrupted by your kids time with God. It's called quiet time with God. But for a season, I feel like God really wanted to show me. It's like, I'm more powerful than anything. Sometimes I just need you to have the faith to step in and just take some very simple steps to co-labor with me. Peace takes effort. Peace takes time and peace takes effort. Now, I want to pause here for a minute, okay? Because it's very easy to think when I say peace takes time and peace takes effort, that it's about our time, that it's about our effort. And through our time and our effort, that's what's gonna bring us peace in our hearts. But that's entirely not the case. And to illustrate, let me just tell you the story, okay? About a year ago, my wife Elaine and I, we went to Perth 
uh, for this marriage conference, Love After Marriage. And uh, we had some you know, crazy personal transformational things happen to us there. Uh, and we came back and I was due to preach a couple of weeks after that. Uh, and I felt called to, to share. I felt God was, was leading me to share and actually to ask Elaine to come up and share uh, with me as well. And we felt very strongly actually that the enemy didn't want us to get this word out to our community. And uh, the, the reason we felt that was because for the, for the week leading up to uh, that sermon, actually every night as we were getting ready to go to bed, Elaine would come down with this crazy ailment. The first night it was this migraine, like so intense, she had never experienced anything like it before. She took Tylenol, she took, you know, codeine, coded whatever pills, and, and when nothing worked, we just, we just hit the mats and we started praying uh, in faith. And for hours and hours, till three or four in the morning, uh, and, and eventually it was healed. The next day, we're, again, we're getting ready for bed, and uh, she got a cramp in her foot, like just insane. She had never felt the, such tightness before and such pain. And again, we just started praying and praying and praying and praying for hours and hours. And then three or four in the morning, uh, it got better, it got healed. The third night, a different thing. The fourth night, a different thing. For the whole week, she was getting sick with something different every single night. And she kept saying, she said this, as a doctor, it doesn't make any sense. There's no medical reason why something like this could happen. And yet it was happening. And on the Sunday, we got up, we shared, and, and, you know, and, and praise God, I, I do feel like God's presence and His peace were in that room that day. But after this whole thing happened, I was just sharing with a friend about the lead-up to it, the, the fact that there was incredible uh, battle, spiritual battle that happened, took place. And, and I was kind of saying it as in like, wow, you know, what, wasn't, isn't it so awesome that there was like this victory every time? Like I've never, I can't even, you know, Remember the last time I prayed for healing and it happened. It's happened like I can count maybe, you know, on one hand the times that I've seen it, let alone like, and in one week I got to experience it like seven times. Incredible. And this person said to me, yeah, but, you know, wouldn't it have been just so much easier uh, if you didn't have to go through all that? And, you know, I didn't really have an answer for him, but I went back and I was praying about it. And, and God gave me this picture. You know, he said, John, remember in high school uh, you couldn't make the basketball team, right? I, I love basketball. In the US, like everybody plays basketball. Um, but I was too short and, and I was too skinny to play basketball. I couldn't make the varsity team. I couldn't even make the junior varsity team. There's no way I could play basketball in any sort of competitive situation. I, I never did. Um, so God said to me, he's like, imagine I, I invited you in high school to play basketball in the NBA. You know, would, would, would that be exciting for you? And I said, of course, God, that'd be amazing, right? To be able to go into the NBA and play at the highest levels of competition, you know, with all these, these heroes of mine, really. Uh, and he said, yeah, well, you know, if you went into the NBA and you went with your own training and your own skill, you would have gotten crushed, right? There's no way you can play in the NBA. But imagine if I invite you to the NBA and I make you grow by two feet, I give you a nasty quick crossover, I give you a money jump shot, I give you a vertical leap that is higher than Spud Webb. If I empower you with all these things to go up against the greatest players who ever lived, how fun would that be? I was like, yeah, yeah, that'd be amazing. That'd be amazing. And he said, you know what? And further, imagine you're playing in the all-star game of all time against Michael Jordan, against Kobe Bryant, against LeBron, against everybody, all your heroes. And not only do I empower you, but I've already won the championship for you, and I already have the championship ring, and I've given it to you, and it's in your pocket. And you're just going out there, and you're having fun, but you know the outcome of this whole thing. How amazing would that be? I was like, that would be amazing. And he said, well, that's what happens every time you go into battle for me. It's not about my time. It's not about my effort. Because if it was about my time and my effort and I went out there on my own strength, I would get crushed. There's no way I could go up against those people and those obstacles. I can't heal a migraine. I don't have the patience to deal with my own kids. I don't have the ability to, to, to go into battle against these crazy chaotic and confusing circumstances around the world. But you know what? I don't need to. Because my time and my effort is just me getting on the basketball court and accepting the invitation to come into line with what God has already done in my life and in my household. There's that saying, without God, we can't. But without us, He won't. He stands at the door 
and he knocks. He could pry it open if he wanted to, but he just loves us so much that he wants to give us the free choice, the free will, the ability to say yes. So when I say peace takes time, peace takes effort, it's true. We have to step on the basketball court. We have to accept the invitation for us, but that's not what gets us the victory. That's not what brings us God's presence. That's not what brings us the peace into our hearts and into our households. It's about the fact that God already did that on the cross. We have the championship ring in our pockets. All we need to do is just step on the court. That's why peace takes time, peace takes effort. But if you get that right, peace takes over. Peace takes over. When you're close to God, when you accept his invitation to co-labor, just to put a tiny little bit of your time and your effort into this recipe where he's already contributed an infinite amount of time, an infinite amount of effort, an unforeseeable, eternal, unimaginable amount of his power and of his grace and of his mercy. When we come and co-labor into that and, and the championship ring that he already has in our pocket, you just see peace everywhere. It starts to overflow from your heart and, and you realize that it just, it's, it's in every single aspect of your household. I was thinking back on some of the unexpected places where God has really showed up for me. And you know, there was one time we were watching a, an Avengers movie and Elaine looked over at me uh, and she said, are you crying? And I said, yeah, I'm crying. And she said, well, what's, what's, what's wrong? Uh, and I said, I don't know, God, God just loves me. And she's like, what are you talking about? And I said, you know, it just points to the love of the Father. And she's like, dude, it's an Avengers movie. They're beating each other up. What are you talking about? Um, I'm, a, I'm a really, really bad gardener. I've never been able to keep a plant live for like more than a day. Uh, you know, the Apostle Peter, when, when uh, he would walk by and a shadow would cover a, a sick person, they would get healed uh, in scripture. And I, I have to say, I'm anointed like Peter, except for my shadow doesn't heal people, it kills plants. Whenever I walk past the plant, the thing dies. It's like, it's crazy. Um, very recently, I discovered this God-given contraption called the click and grow. And uh, you're actually, you know, there are three pods. You just stick a seed in there. Uh, you plug it in, pour some water in. And you have to be a complete idiot to kill a plant with this thing. Um, and I have to, it's, it's God-given because it's a miracle that I've actually seen uh, multiple plants now come out of this thing. Basil, mint, strawberries are next. And I got to say, I have it right in front of me on my desk. And, and when I'm doing my quiet time, I tell you, God speaks to me through my plants. It's crazy. You know, I am the vine, you are the branches. Or, you know, he is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season. His leaf does not wither. and Whatever he does prospers. Like all sorts of, God just speaks so clearly through my plant. It's insane. Uh, the other day I was having, uh, during this whole lockdown season, I was having um, some quiet time with God. And, and I was, first I was giving thanks for the fact that uh, I just feel like over the last five or six years, I guess really since I've come to Solomon's Porch, uh, I feel like I've just grown so much closer to God. Uh, and that's not bragging because it was from a very, very low base for those of you guys who knew me uh, before that. But you know, I just felt so thankful uh, for God being so good uh, and, and just drawing me closer. Um, and I guess I had this thought that came after that. It was, it was kind of um, a thought that, that brought a little anxiety even and despair, which was basically like, God, what's next? You know, in the next five or six years, let's say I got like 10 times closer to you, you know, since, since coming here five or six years ago, like if I project forward, can I get, can I get 10 times closer to you? I mean, what, you know, what we have now is amazing, but I want so much more. Um, is it even physically possible? What does that actually look like from a, from a situational perspective to even try and get 10 times closer, to take it to another order of magnitude from here. I mean, I, I don't think I can physically spend 10 times more time with you, for instance. I mean, you know, I gotta, I gotta go to the bathroom, I gotta eat, I gotta, I gotta work and make a living for my family and, and, and all this stuff. Like, what does it even look like to do that? And I, I felt like God, um, he just gave me this, first of all, he gave me this verse, where is it? Um, uh, Psalms 2.11 says, serve the Lord with fear uh, and celebrate his rule with trembling. And I was like, okay, well, that, that's interesting. Uh, but what does that mean, God? And then I looked down and he actually um, spoke to me through my dog, my dog, Madison. If you think about it, during um, this lockdown period, and if you compare who I'm spending time to before uh, the lockdown happened, I'm definitely spending more time with my kids, definitely spending more time with my wife, 
Uh, but actually, the biggest delta by far is with my dog, Madison. Um, I never saw her before COVID. And now literally like in the house, whenever, from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep, she's by my side. I, I, I get out of my room and she's waiting there. And she's so excited to see me that she's, she'll jump like three times you know, her height like over and over again because she's so excited to see me. And she's literally, she's like shaking. She's trembling in my presence because she's so excited to see me. Uh, if, I, if I skip out and go to another room, uh, she, she, and, and she misses it for some reason, she'll like, she'll run after me. And, you know, if the door gets closed behind her, she'll sit there and she'll scratch and say, please, please, please. And, you know, she's barking until I come and open the door and let her in the same room. She's desperate to be in my presence all the time. And she's so happy. In fact, I'm right now uh, here. I'm in this room and uh, my, my kids aren't here. My wife is not here, but Maddie is here. Come, Maddie. Come. Yeah. See, Maddie is here right now. Right. And uh, say hi to the camera. Say hi. Yeah. So, so uh, it's just amazing that, um, you know, I'm spending so much time with her and, and God said, look, look, you know, you feel like you can't spend 10 times more time with me than you are now. That's, that's totally nonsense, right? Maddie goes to the bathroom with you. Maddie eats with you. When you're working, she's there. When you're doing everything, she's there. When you're doing your quiet time, she's there. When you're, you know, doing your sermons, she's there. She's always there. You can spend 10 times more time with me and be conscious about it and be desperate and be so excited to be trembling when you get into my presence. There's so much more. In fact, it's not just that you can get 10 times closer to me. You can get a thousand times, a million times closer to me. No matter how much you pursue me, I will always pursue you so much more. And then this incredible sense of hope and, uh, and, and, and peace came over my heart just to know, you know that God loves me so much. There's no limit. There's no limit to how close and how intimate that, that we can get with him. He spoke to me through my dog. It's crazy. See, when you just co-labor, when you just do the little bit, just, just accept the invitation to get out on the court, to spend a little bit of the time, a little bit of the effort to co-labor with the infinite amount of effort, time, power, and contribution that God has already done, his sacrifice, then amazing things happen. Peace takes over. It is all, and let me tell you this actually, you know, we titled this thing as how to have God's peace in your household. But let me tell you this. Actually, the, the, the correct way to say it is this. God's peace is already in your household. It's all, he's all over your house, right? The process for us is not to usher, you know, it in and say, hey, uh, God, like, you're not here. You're not here. Please come. Like, how come you're not here? It's so chaotic. You're not here. No, God is already there. The process for us in co-laboring is just aligning ourselves to the reality of what he's already done. He's already in your household. He is not the author of confusion or of chaos. He is a God of order. He is the author of peace. That is the will that he has in store for you in your life. It's a reality already. And what he's calling you into today, church, is to come in line with that beautiful reality, that beautiful truth. He loves you. He's so proud of you. There have been moments for me where certainly I felt like, you know, I wasn't doing a good job. I lost my temper. Um, and, you know, I feel like I'm not alone in that, right? I mean, it's been, it's been a stressful time. But I feel like God also wants to just relay, like, he doesn't, he doesn't withhold his love. He doesn't say, I don't love you because you lost your temper. Um, he loves you because you're his child. And that's what good fathers do. They love their children. He loves you. He's so proud of you. He's been sowing peace. He's been authoring, writing it into your household. It's already there. And, uh, you know, just, he, just shift the perspective of whatever has happened over the last couple months, whatever you've been feeling. It's just been a little bit of spiritual exercise. And there's going to be so much goodness, so much peace, so much of his presence in store for you in, in your household in the season to come. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you so much for being so good. It's such an awesome God for watching over us, for protecting us, Lord, for bringing your peace, Father. You bring it. You bring it like no other, Father God, because you're the Lord of Lords. You're the King of Kings, Father God. And everything, Father God, in this entire world, it all belongs to you and your kingdom. It's part of your dominion. And Father, so we just, we just come to you. We lay it down at your feet. You know, all the struggles, the, the, the apparent chaos and confusion that we've been feeling, Father God, in our homes, Father. And we just declare that it's all yours. 
that your will for us, Father God, is not confusion and chaos. You are the author of peace, and that is what you have for us in our households. But we thank you for that. We praise you for being such a good God. In your son's most precious name we pray, amen. God bless you, and have a wonderful week ahead. I searched the world But it couldn't fail me A man's empty praise Treasures the face Never enough Then you came along And put me back together and every desire now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Lord, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. To show you my weakness, my failures and flaws, Lord, you sing the more, and you still call me friend. He's the God of the mountains, He's the God of the valley. And there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me.